how to make custom titantrons in WWE 2K23. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create the best custom titantrons for all of your superstars in WWE 2K23, giving you the fundamental techniques that you're going to need ranging from beginner to advanced levels. If this video helps you out in any type of way, please consider dropping a like on it. And without a further ado, let's jump into the first part of creating your custom titantron. For the sake of this tutorial, we're going to be showing you how you can create a more modern style of titantron that features cool text and logos over the top of animated backgrounds, like the example shown on screen here. The titantrons that we'll be making today will be for this awesome Brian Danielson core created by Iconic 2K. And if you'd like to download this core for yourself, we'll leave a link to Iconic's tweet with the download details in the description down below. To begin making the titantron, head on over to Creations, then Video. After selecting New to start a new project, you'll be brought to this page and presented with four different options. You have Highlights Clip, which is where you'll find any clips that you've saved from the in-game highlight reel. Then you have Video Clip, which includes a range of stylized video clips that you can use to customize your titantrons. Next is Cutscene, which allows you to add a variety of different scenes and entrances to your titantron. And finally, you have Image Animation, which lets you add in both your own and in-game logos and then add an animation to those logos for your titantron. For the sake of the more modern style titantron that we're making here today, we're only going to be using the Video Clip and Image Animation options. However, if you would be interested in us making a guide on how to make a more traditional style titantron that includes footage of the superstar in action that would make use of these highlight clips and cutscene options, like the example shown on screen here, then be sure to let us know in the comments down below, and if enough of you are interested in that type of thing, it's certainly something that we can put together for you. In order to create our Brian Danielson titantrons, we're going to break this down into an easy to follow step by step guide through which we'll go through the various tools that Create A Video has to offer so that you can understand how each of them work. By the time we've moved through all of the steps, you should not only have a clear understanding of how the various tools work, but I'll be giving you some extra, more advanced tips as we go, meaning you should be able to apply all of these skills with your own creative ideas to successfully make your very own high quality titantrons by the end of this tutorial. So here we go folks. Step 1. Click on Image Animation. Scroll down to Custom Images and select the image that you would like to use. I'm going to use this circular Brian Danielson logo that I found over on Hellman45's DeviantArt, link down below. After selecting the image you would like to use, press Apply on the next page and then choose the type of animation you would like to use. For the sake of this titantron that I am making, I want something that fades in from black. So I'm going to pick this one that also comes with this nice little spin on it. Once you have selected the image animation you would like to use, simply press accept without making any further changes to your logo. This will add the image animation to your saved clips. Step 2. Click on image animation once again. Scroll down to custom images and select the exact same logo that you just picked the first time around. Again, you're going to press apply on the next page and from here, when presented with the option to select your image animation, you're going to want to scroll down to the fifth row and select the animation at the far right of this line. This right here is just a still, stationary animation that doesn't move around at all. After selecting this animation, you're going to want to go ahead and extend the length of this clip using the right trigger on whatever controller you happen to be using. You can make this as long as you like, but for the sake of what I'm making here today, I'm going to make it roughly 5 seconds long. Once you're happy with the length, press Accept. This will once again add the image animation to your saved clips. Step 3. Scroll down to your saved clips underneath the Save button and add the two image animation clips that you just created to the middle layer of your timeline in the order that you created them, putting the shorter one first, followed by the longer one. If done correctly, when you play this back, you should see that the two clips play seamlessly into one another without any weird cuts or jumps. Step 4. 
Now we're going to want to add a background to our logo. Before doing this, I want you to take a mental note of how long your two image animation clips are in total. For me, the total length of time is 6.13 seconds. It's important to note this, as you'll want your background to be this same length. Once you've made a note of that, select Video Clip, then Video Clip Preset. Here you will find a huge array of preset video stock footage that you can use in the creation of your Titan Trolls. There is so much here, ranging from things that would work for specific gimmicks, to more generic animations that would work for everything. So I would highly recommend taking your time to look through these to find the perfect video for the character that you're creating this Titan Tron for. For the vision that I have in mind for this Brian Danielson Tron, I want to use something quite smoky. So I'm going to go ahead with this one right here, Sky 4. Once you have selected your desired video, you'll be brought to this page where you can edit the length of your clip. This is where we want to trim the video down to the length that we made a mental note of earlier, which in my case was 6.13 seconds. To do this, I simply use my right trigger once again to make the small white line move along the blue line until I make it reach 6.13 seconds. Once you're there, press the right button on your D-pad to make the end point the point in which you are editing, then press point except, which would be X on PlayStation or A on Xbox. If done correctly, you should see that the upside down triangle on the far right side of the blue line will teleport to the point at the timeline you selected. After you've done that, press accept to add this to your saved clips. Once in your saved clips, go ahead and select it and add it to your timeline, this time placing the clip on the bottom layer underneath your logos. If all done correctly, when you play this back, you should see that your two image animations should now have your video background playing behind them. Step 5. Now this next step will be optional for many of you because what we're going to do right now is add a filter to our clip. To add a filter, make sure you are hovering over the video clip on the timeline in which you would like to add the filter to. In my case, it's going to be the background video clip that I just added to the timeline. While hovering over the clip, press the right bumper on your controller to add the filter. This will take you to a page with a variety of different filters to choose from, ranging from simple color overlays to actual video effects. These filters are great for allowing you to further customize your Titantron so that all of the colors can be in line with what your character is wearing. For the sake of the Titantron I'm making for Brian Danielson, I'm going to add the black and white effects because I want to remove the blue that is seen in the Sky 4 video clip to give it more of that smoky vibe that I'm going for. After selecting your filter, you will be given options to move it around and adjust the size of it. But I would say that this is something not many of you are going to need to do, so simply press select a further two more times to fully apply the filter to your video clip. If done correctly, you should immediately see it change colour in the video preview window. Step 6. On top of adding a filter to our video background, I also want to add a transition so that the background also fades in from black in a similar way to that of the logo above it. In order to do this, I will once again hover over the video clip on my timeline only this time, instead of pressing the right bumper, we're going to go ahead and press the left bumper. Here, you will find six different options that you can apply for your transition. I would recommend staying away from the dissolve transition effects, as in my experience, not only do they not apply a dissolve effect, but they also don't really work in the way that they should either. So it's best just to avoid using these ones altogether. If you're going to be starting your clip with a transition, you're going to want an in transition. Whereas if you're going to be ending your clip with a transition, you're going to want an out transition. Seeing as I'm starting my clip with a transition in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and select the black in transition. After you've selected the transition that you'll want to use, you'll be given the options to move it. I wouldn't recommend moving it around at all as by default, the transition will be perfectly aligned with the start of your clip, which is where you want it to be. However, after pressing select to confirm the movement options, you'll be presented with the ability to adjust the size of your transition and this is something you're going to want to do. Since we're applying this transition to the beginning of a clip, we're not going to need to resize the effect start, but we are going to want to resize the effect end, which we can do so using our right stick. 
Move the right stick towards the left and you should see the effect, represented by this white gradient, move along with it. You'll want to move the white gradient towards the front of your clip so that it is just shorter than the first section of the image animation that you added in step 1. Once you're happy with the placement of the gradient, press select once again to confirm and if done correctly, when you play this back, you should see that both your logo and your video background fade in from black alongside each other. Now before we move on to step 7, there's two things I wanted to mention. The first one is to save your project right here. Unfortunately, create a video can have some glitches where if it's open for too long, you won't be able to successfully save your project at the end of it. For me, this was usually anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes of having create a video open, so just bear that in mind and make sure to save your project as you go in order to not lose any of your progress. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that for a lot of people, these first six steps will be plenty for getting you started on making your own custom titantrons. If you're just looking for something simple because you have a universe mode made up of 50 characters and you just want to give every single one of them a custom titantron as quickly as possible, then I would just recommend sticking to these first six steps, just making the clips longer to fit the entire timeline. However, for those of you looking to take this type of titantron to the next level with some more advanced steps, I've got you covered. To return to the tron you were just creating, head back to create and then video, only this time around, instead of selecting new, select edit, just like you would for any other create mode in the game. Here, you will find a list of all of your saved video projects where you can simply select one, click edit, and then you'll be taken back to the timeline to make changes to your tron. Step 7. Add an out transition to the end of your second logo animation. This is the logo animation that we added in step 2. We're going to apply this transition in the exact same way we did before, by hovering over the clip, pressing the left bumper, however this time, we're going to select black out instead of black in. Immediately press select again to move past the movement options into the resize options and when here, this time around, Instead of using your right stick to resize the end of the effect, you're going to use your left stick to resize the start of the effect. Resize the transition by moving your left stick towards the right until you're happy with the position of the gradient on the timeline. This step is going to be important for later on as it will prevent your logo and video clip background from randomly popping up later in the video when we add in more clips. From here, I want to move away from the first logo that I showed at the beginning of the Titantron and show a different one, and in order to get there, I'm going to use an Alpha Mask preset. To find where these are, simply select Video Clip, then Alpha Mask Preset. Just like in the Video Clip Preset option, here you will find a large variety of different video clips that you can use to create your Titantron, only the difference with these video clips is that in some areas of the clip, they are transparent. The ways in which you can use these alpha mask presets to your advantage would only be limited by your own creativity, and honestly, each one of these alpha mask preset options could justifiably come with a tutorial of its very own. But for now, I'm going to show you a fairly advanced trick with one of these options that will hopefully give you a good idea of the types of things that you could achieve while using these. For this example, I'm going to be using the option called Alpha Fire 6. Now, what I want is for this alpha mask to appear over the top of my previous image animations and video clip background, consuming them in fire. Then, since this alpha mask continues on for about 10 seconds, I would like a second Brian Danielson logo to fly in on top of that. However, the problem that we have is that the Create a Video feature only gives you three layers to work with. So we're going to need to get a little bit technical with this. With that being said, step 8. Go to Video Clip, then Alpha Mask Presets and select the option that you would like to use. Again, I'll be using Alpha Fire 6 for this example. After selecting the Alpha Mask preset you would like to use, using your right trigger, find a moment in the footage in which the effect mostly consumes the entire screen. For Alpha Fire 6, I feel that sweet spot is right around the 3.7 second mark. Once you're happy with this placement, 
Press the right button on your D-pad to select the end point, then press point accept to cut the clip down to that 3.7 second mark. Then press accept to add this to your saved clips. Step 9. Go back into video clip, then alpha mask presets, and once again select the same option you did the first time around. After selecting, use your right trigger to drag the white line to the exact same spot you did the first time around. For me, that's going to be 3.76 seconds again. And this time around, you're going to press the left button on your D-pad to select the start point. Then, point accept to cut off the beginning part of your clip. Then go ahead and press accept to add this to your saved clips. If done correctly, you should now have your alpha mask preset in your saved clips in two perfect halves. Step 10. Select the first half of your alpha mask preset and add it to the top layer of your video track. Using the triggers and bumpers on your controller, position this video clip so that it hangs over the edge of the clips underneath it by about 4 frames. This is important to prevent issues happening later on. Once you're happy with the positioning of your clip, press select to place it onto the timeline. Step 11. Select the second half of your alpha mask preset and add it to the middle layer of your video track. You should find that this alpha mask video clip will automatically snap to the image animation that is also on your middle layer. When that happens, simply press the right bumper two times to move the second half of the alpha mask preset over by just two frames. If done correctly, the second half of your alpha mask preset should not only be two frames away from the image animation that it is next to, but the first half of the alpha mask preset that is above the second half on the top layer should overlap the second half by two frames of its own. This is important, because if you don't set things up like this, you will find that when you save your titantron at the end, it will have a random black frame in between both halves of the alpha mask video clips, even though the preview within creative video looks fine if the clips are lined up exactly. Step 12. Now we're going to add in a second logo, just like we did in step 1. So to do this, go to image animation, custom images, then select the image you would like to use. This time around, I'm going to use this The American Dragon logo that I found over on Daryl Ford 051's DeviantArt, link down below. Just like in step 1, we're going to apply an animation of our choice to the logo. I want to use something a bit more dramatic this time around, so I'm going to select this animation where the logo flies onto the screen with a shake effect. After picking the animation, I simply press accept on the next page to add this to my saved clips. Step 13. Again, just like we did in step 2, we're going to add in the same logo that we just added, only this time around we're going to be using the animation located at the end of row 5 in order to keep this version as a still image. We then increase the length of the logo to our desired amount, which in this instance I would make around the same length as the second half of your alpha mask preset animation minus the length of the first half of your second logo animation. For me, that would mean 10.15 seconds, minus 0.51 seconds, minus a further 0.3 seconds to account for the two frame overlap, for a total of 9.28 seconds. However, because of what we'll be adding to the end of this titantron in just a moment, you don't really need to get this technical with the numbers, just aim to make the second half of this logo animation around the same length and you should be all good. Step 14. Apply the two image animation clips that you just created to the top layer of your timeline in the order that you created them, above the second half of the alpha mask preset animation. You should find that when you add the first half of your image animation clips, it will automatically snap to the first half of the alpha mask preset clip that is also on the top layer. This is completely fine and the ideal position you want to place the first half of your image animation. Then, simply snap on the second half of the image animation to the first half, just like you did back during step 3. Step 15. Apply an out transition to the second half of your image animation. You can do this just like you did back in step 7, by hovering over the video clip, pressing the left bumper, then selecting the blackout option. 
Immediately press select again to move past the movement options into the resize options and when here, resize the transition by moving your left stick towards the right until you're happy with the position of the gradient on the timeline. Finally, repeat this step to apply an out transition to the second half of your Alpha Mask preset video clip located in the middle layer. If all steps have been completed successfully, you should now have yourself a fairly advanced Titantron created that showcases not one, but two logos related to your superstar of choice presented in a unique and dynamic way. Simply go ahead and save the Titantron once again under the same name if you so desire, only this time around. While your Titantron is encoding, make sure to pay attention to the preview in the background as that preview that plays during the encoding is a more accurate representation of what the final Titantron will look like in game. So if you happen to see any random black frames or logos where they shouldn't be, you can quickly jump straight back into editing the Tron to fix that. Please note however, I wouldn't recommend you cancel the encoding if you do see any mistakes as if you do, you can run into that same issue I mentioned earlier in the video where you won't be able to save your Titan Tron, forcing you to start all over again. And then just in case you didn't already know, to apply your Titan Tron once it is completed, simply head on over to create an entrance, select the superstar you would like to apply the Tron to, scroll down to Titan Tron Movie once in the entrance options, Use the right bumper to switch from Superstar Movie to Custom Video, and once there, you should find the Titan Tron that you just created with the name that you gave it. You don't need to do anything special to make it appear here, it will just be here for you after you save your video. So there we have it folks, that is how you create a modern style Titan Tron in WWE 2K23, ranging from beginner to advanced levels. As mentioned earlier in the video, if you would like us to follow up with another Titantron tutorial, one that shows you how to create a more traditional style Titantron like you saw back in the day, then be sure to let us know in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe for more WWE 2K23 content and tutorials. Thank you all very much for watching this video and if you like this one, you may enjoy one of these videos as well.